All right. Well, welcome to a new year of digital teaching and learning webinars. Um, this webinar today is our September webinar, and we'll be looking at the ISTE student standards this year with today being Empowered Learner. Um, so you, here you can see the student standards and the posters that we've begun distributing to you guys. If you haven't got one, we still have some. Um, but you can see we'll just follow in that order um, other than December will be a special treat but the rest of them it just follows in order for each of those standards and here is the digital teaching and learning team we're growing in numbers so it's fun to have a little bit larger team if you need to know who you work with at this point you probably know but if you need to know you can always look on our website under our team and then we have a few announcements before we jump into the sessions today. Um, just one, remember there is the monthly reporting form for your tech trainings um, that will be linked on the Digital Teacher Leader Canvas course on the homepage. Um, you'll see it in the, on the homepage. You'll just have a button that says monthly tech reporting. Um, if you have not been ad added to that course, either contact me or your specific digital learning specialist and we'll make sure you get added to the course. Um, we want to remind you that Utah Ed Chat returns this coming Wednesday, so tomorrow, um, 8 o'clock on Twitter, or I guess it's now called X. So, it, and Jared Covilli is the host this week, so that should be fun. Yeah, we're going to that. We're gonna be talking about homecoming. Get your tickets to the dance. <laughs> um, and then we also want to mentioned that on September 22nd, the District Professional Development Day, um, we're gonna have an optional PD that we're offering on School AI. Um, that will be held at Mountain Ridge High School at one. And I th think, Jared, correct me if I'm wrong, I think everyone who's been involved in the pilot will get invited to that. We will, but as coaches, if that's something that you wanna attend, you're welcome to attend it as well. Yes. Or if your ad admin in your building wants to come, they could come as well. Um, and then our next webinar will be the first Tuesday in October. So October 3rd, we'll be talking about digital citizen. And then just a couple other things. We want to let you know that we'll be opening up a new cohort for the ed tech endorsement. Um, starting in classes will start in January. So if you want information on that, you can visit the website and go to the EdTech endorsement page or scan this QR code. Deanna, do you have anything to add about that? Um, no, we just going to start a new cohort. We'll be running two concurrently, so we'll have the new one plus the one that's continuing going on at the same time. So we'll have some new instructors in that in the EdTech endorsement, so it'll be fun. Yeah, and we, we would love to have more coaches that aren't endorsed yes. be involved in that. Absolutely. As a way right now to uh, increase their technology skills, comfort level in using technology with their teachers. And then the last announcement on here, um, just a reminder, we sent this out a couple times, but just a reminder that if you have teachers who are new to your school, new to the district, they'll want to request a Zoom Pro account um, sooner rather than later so we don't we're not rushing to get those taken care of right at parent teacher conferences and so you can find that information um, on our website digitallearning.doordistrict.org it's just on the right hand side you'll find where you can request that form oh and colby just a reminder about that too is if they already have a um, pro zoom account they just need to go re-log in that doesn't expire or anything so if they've already had one in the past it's still good so yes great so that is the end of our announcements so we're going to move into today's sessions um we have two cho choices like we've done in the past so if you're new with these webinars um the topic is the same isd standard but then we usually have two kind of separate uh ways of looking at that standard so today ross will be doing one of them on empowered learning with canvas and then casey will be doing a demo on school ai empowering learners with school ai casey or ross do you have anything to add any teasers for your session 
Um, basically, we're going to be looking at Canvas in my session and how a student can uh, make the choice in, in their learning. They're in control. And we're going to show you some steps and tools that they can do to be an empowered learner. All right, and then Casey, you just said that sounds good. It's a cool AI demo, right? Yep. Okay. Right. So we're gonna go ahead and Ross just put his link in the chat. If you would like to join Ross to learn about Canvas, um, go ahead and go to that. You can leave this room and go to that Zoom meeting. And if you would like to stay here for the school AI demo, then you'll just stay right here and Casey will get started in just a minute. All right. Um, okay, so is everyone in here who would like to stay for School AI? All right. Perfect. We're all excited. So excited. So excited. Okay, I am going to share my screen really quickly. Amber wants to use this so her kids don't cheat in esports. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I um, just wanted to give a little bit of background before we get dive right into the school AI demo. Uh, so I, I apologize to Krista because I know she's heard some of this. So you can just take it in again, <laughs> but we're going to go through the background really quick and then we'll have a lot of time to mess with the tool. So first thing I wanted to talk about is what is AI? So um, AI, it's artificial intelligence, the ability of a computer to use data to perform tasks. And the crazy thing is, is the AI has been around for a while. I think a lot of us are like, oh no, new new robots that are coming at us. No, it's, it's been there for a while. We're just coming up with new ways um, and, and improvements. So another thing that I feel like is a misconception and that teachers kind of panic about is that they're like, AI is going to take my job. It can think better than me. It can do my job better than me, which isn't true. So there are many types. There's these four types of AI. So we've got reactive AI that has no memory and it responds to stimulus, stimuli. So like when you're texting in your phone and it fills it in for you or um, Netflix recommendations. Okay, my Netflix knows me very, very well. <laughs> it's reactive AI. Uh, so then we've got limited memory, and this is where we're at now. So it uses the memory and the data to improve its responses. So it's learning and improving based on the data that we input. And, um, and then I think the misconception comes in where it understands your needs and it has feelings and all of that stuff. And I think we can all agree that teachers are the key, we need feelings and we understand each other's and our students needs and that's what makes us our job what it is so what are the limitations when and i feel like when we know the limitations of ai we can be educated we can be empowered to learn its true capabilities and not have this fear surrounding it so the thought i had was that it's like a self-driving car uh it has uh, the capability to drive itself However, you can't just turn it on and fall asleep. We've watched the news. We know that that's not um, what we do. So it's programmed to look at data around them, a red light, a pedestrian, a, a line, and to do what it's supposed to do. But at the end of the day, you have to have a driver in the driver's seat. And that's exactly what AI um, is like. And I think we need to teach our students that as well. It's not just an answer to, uh, they don't want to write an essay. I'm going to have AI do it. It doesn't really work. Um, as well as they think it does. Um, other limitations, it doesn't really have any personalization. It can't like make up personal stories. It can't have a human personality. But on the other hand, it also is made up of data from humans. And so it has bias, it has discrimination, and sometimes it's not true. Some of the things it says are not true. Um, it also has like a lack, just kind of combining those two, a lack of creativity. It doesn't come up with tons of unique things. It only can do what the data t puts together that it can do. And it really can't do nuance or deep discussion. And as you're looking at all these things, these are things as teachers that we look for for our students to know that they're learning. 
So there's really that fear of it's, it's going to do all the work for them. Um, in reality, it really can't if we are looking for the right things. So, but way, what AI can do is it generates quick results. Uh, as you can see here, what it can and cannot do. It finds logical solutions. It helps us find errors. It makes decisions based on criteria. And so what we can see is that there's a lot of ways that it can help. So why are we even talking about this as educators? So the the reality is that AI is our reality and that it is going to be a part of our existence and our students' existence and what they do throughout their lives. I read or I heard somewhere, read somewhere that 65% of the jobs that our students will have when they graduate aren't even invented yet. And I'm sure that AI is a huge part of that. And so it's our responsibility as educators to help our students be prepared for that. So uh, we teach them, like when a, a new playground is installed in my elementary world, we would get a playground. We would walk those kids out there and be like, you don't climb up the slide. This is how you swing. This is how you go across the monkey bars. And, and the same goes for any other equipment we use in our education, an encyclopedia, an iPad, a Chromebook. We have to teach them how to use it. And it is a tool to help us learn better. And so that's what we need to view AI as we go into and as it is brought into our classrooms. Uh, just some quick things. I'm going to give you the link to this presentation um, in the chat, but there are some things that I would love for you to think about, discuss with your, <clears throat> excuse me, discuss with your teams. Uh, the first one, this is an article written by a college student and the title caught my eye. If chat GPT can do our homework, AI isn't the problem. And so be thinking about with, you know, your leadership teams, how homework, we need to reevaluate what we're doing and our teaching practice. So I also put in this slide just some things that AI cannot do. AI can't create a video based on your standards. It can't really analyze uh, primary source documents. It can't have an in-class discussion. So you need to be thinking about those things. So if a teacher comes to you and is panicking because they feel like AI is going to take all of their curriculum, then you need to say, okay, AI isn't the problem. We need to look at your curriculum. So these are some coaching conversations that you might be able to have. This is another idea for ways that students can use chat GPT, but, or not chat GPT, AI in your classroom, an AI bot. Um, and finally, this is another one to think about. Uh, what do we define plagiarism? How do we define plagiarism and cheating? Um, we did a our esteemed boss, Jared, was on a newscast, a newscast, a broadcast, and um, there was a teacher on there. So Jared was on saying, AI is so cool. We have AI for our district and we're really excited about it. And then there was another teacher, bless her heart, who was like, we're only going to do paper pencil. There's no other way I will know that they're learning. <laughs> and I thought that that was just a little bit sad because, and her reasoning was she didn't know if they were cheating. But with AI coming onto the stage, we need to think, okay, I really liked looking at the middle. Student wrote the main ideas and AI generated a draft and they worked on it. So just discuss with your teams, especially in your, if you're in that secondary um, situation. So to get to the fun part, how can AI support teachers in their classroom right now with the tools that Jordan District is going to give you? So this is my favorite study I like to use when we talk about AI. Teachers work about 50 hours a week, and I think that's on average. Uh, so there's a lot of us are working a lot longer than that. And the shocking part, though, was that they're spending less than half of that time in direct interaction with their students. And so um, that doesn't mean we're not doing our job. That just means that half of our time is being used on those executive things, those emails, the planning, the grading, um, all of those things, that, the professional development, administrative tasks. And so the thought is, how can we take some of that and give it back to our kids? How can we use our time a little bit more effectively? So, and some of us feel like I'm doing the very best that I can, but AI is going to change that. I think that AI can fill in those gaps that we just can't fill. So AI can write emails, write assessments, plan lessons, plan interventions. That one was a huge one for me because sometimes 
we're just tapped out. Like as a teacher, you are just fully tapped out. You're like, I cannot plan another small group. I cannot, I plan 17 a day. And so we are only capable of so much. Uh, writing passages, reading passages. Sometimes you need a volcano passage that uses that very specific vocabulary word. And you spent hours in, on Google looking for a passage that could work. AI can just write it right for you. Book lists, uh, a project based on a standard, uh, rubrics, leveling a passage that you find. You could say, okay, I found this Time Magazine thing, not the level I need. It can level it for you. So I'll, I don't even know if we are fully, we have, we can even think of all the capable, the capabilities of, of AI, but these are some ideas that I had. So what we're going to do is I am going to send you here. I'm just going to stop sharing really quick. Um, I'm going to send you the link to the pilot. Is there anyone in this Zoom who has not signed up for the pilot? You can just raise your hand or send it. Okay, so I'm going to just send that pilot link in the chat. And it is going to, it's probably going to take some time. So you can just kind of observe while I go through school AI, but that you should be able to get on soon and look at what is available. So we are in this pilot right now. I'll get everybody in. Oh, go ahead, Jared. What'd you say? I said, I'll make sure everybody who wants to gets in. Oh, perfect. So Jared's uh, making sure everyone's in. So this is what it looks like. School AI is basically a using that open AI, the big, scary data AI thing and narrowing it down and becoming a filter, so to speak, for our for safe use in our schools. And so when you log in, you'll see that there are three options. We've got spaces, we've got chat, and we have planner. And also this is kind of your dashboard where you'll have uh, different prompts. But I wanted to go over these three things right here. So first, if you start planner, what you can do is up at the top, you'll click generate. I'm so sorry, excuse me. So generate a lesson plan. And so in this prompt, you can put anything. You can put a standard, you can type as much as you want. But what I'll do for now is um, I'll do uh, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And I'll do that for a fifth grade level. And we'll generate that lesson plan. Uh, and what is really amazing um, is that it will generate different parts of a lesson plan. So it has a summary. It'll give you learning outcomes. And I find that the learning outcomes are leveled really well. Uh, as you can see, identify nouns and verbs. And then by the end, they're creating a short story with nouns, verbs, and adjectives. It also gives you the time in the corner. Um, and what you can do with your teachers is also remind them just like you would with a student that this is not a print and go and be done. We are professionals and we need to look through this with the lens of, is this really going to match what I want my students to do? So then it goes into the description an introduction and it has all of these really great just activities like ask students to brainstorm each category um and then you have an activity uh put them in small groups so a lot of this is research based um it provide feedback and clarification challenge have students write their own sentence um and then it, it goes through every single part of this lesson um and I don't know, I and then it also gives a little like AI image at the end and they said they're working on it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this image is like the one I would use, but they they give a little one at the end. Um, and so once you've generated that plan, you've looked through it. Uh, it's definitely a starting point um, and it is stored right here in your lesson plans and you can share them, you can delete them. Um, here's another lesson that I made uh, and it's just kind of the same things. Uh, one, I wanted to point out with this one that there's a jigsaw activity in there uh, and I prompted it to do that. I said, give me research-based um, engagement activities for that. Cooperative learning, 
Um, I can see this really being used for a teacher who's struggling, um, you know, to do multiple activities in a lesson. I know that we have in our buildings uh, coaching opportunities for teachers who um, kind of just do some direct instruction and then independent work. I think this could really inspire a teacher and empower them to do a little bit more with their lessons. So that is planner. Does anyone have any questions about planner or want to see anything specific? Perfect. Okay. Uh, so then the next one is chat. So this is the one where it's like the, the world is your oyster. Like there are so, so many things that you can do with it. So you can see, like, I've had all of these on here. Um, explain it like I'm five, prepare an icebreaker, build a behavior plan. Um, let's see. You can also have it do your weekly emails. Hey, Casey. Uh, yeah. It's also really good if like you're struggling on how to like start or have a conversation with a parent about behavior mm -hmm. or concerns you're seeing. I've like typed in my concerns and it's helped start filtering it out. So it's easier to start that because that's sometimes the hardest thing to do is where to go. Yeah. So you, you that's something that you've used it for this this year. Chris says, that's something you've used this Sorry, year? yes. I forgot I was muted. Yes. <laughs> you were like, I have to think about that one. <laughs> no. So yeah, that, let's let's even look what it would say. Like, help me start a conversation with a parent about their student um, who is struggling to stay in their seat and is disruptive. The other thing is you might be thinking, okay, well, what about like data privacy and stuff like that? Everything um, follows the guidelines of data privacy. Um, as you can see, let's partner to support so-and-so's learning experience, which I love. It's just, that's just a great email. I hope this message finds you well. I'm reaching out to discuss something I've noticed. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, I know that I chatted with someone who uses this to kind of write their emails to their boss as well, like to a principal or um, to like a professor. This could be really helpful. That's a really good um, example, Krista. Thank you. You would uh, never the, do that, right, Casey? No, no. I <laughs> sometimes, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is spaces, which I think is what sets school AI apart and is so, so fun. So spaces is where students are on the AI. Um, currently our students cannot take part in this right now. Um, if you're part of the pilot program, um, but we'll keep you guys updated on if that is a possibility. So I wanted to show you what it looks like from the teacher side, and then I'm going to send you a link and we're going to be participants. You guys are going to be participants in a, um, a spaces. So if you click um, here, you'll see here's my active sessions. And here are some examples. So sidekick is where students can go in and just talk to a bot about whatever. Um, and of course, you have access to all of their chats. They have a system where if they ask for certain things, it'll say no, and you can see that. Uh, we've got Pulse, which is an exit ticket, and Pulse, a bell ringer. So like an intro to a lesson, outro to a lesson. Um, and then they have these spaces that are specific to standards, which is so, so cool. And there are a lot of spaces that are being developed right now by teachers. Uh, this one is really cool, the Battle of Yorktown. I definitely encourage you to go try it. Uh, it talks about, you know, different parts and I don't know, solar system is a sixth grade uh, and also languages. Like if you're learning Spanish, uh, you can go um, in there and talk about that. You can also request one. But I wanted to show you uh, the pulse because pulse uh, gives you data. So we'll open this up. And I had... Tracy, get on. And what I wanted to do was do uh, the nouns, verbs, and adjectives, like I showed you with that lesson plan. And so Tracy, she did such a good job. <laughs> so AI said, hey, how are you doing? Are you feeling ready for class? Which I think is a really fun introduction. 
Um, so we're going to be talking about nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Do you already know about these parts? You can kind of tell like it's an introduction. It's before you've done your direct instruction. And then that's absolutely right. Nouns are words that are uh, that name people, places, and things. And um, so she was giving all of the right answers. And you can see right here that um, she was getting greens. And she has a little smiley face emoji because that, and that tells me that I know that she knows what we're talking about. And that data is really valuable before I go into a lesson. So we're going to invite, I'm so excited. I'll even stop sharing so you guys can just get a full view of what we're doing. Um, so while you guys open up into that bell ringer, Elena said, do all teachers already have access? They can using that extended pilot. Um, and so on our website, which I'll show at the end, there's a link to a form and they can um, sign up to get into uh, the pilot. Uh, and one more question. Yeah. If the teacher is enrolled, uh, what is the way to enroll students and create the classroom or like? So we don't have that yet just because that feature isn't open. But Jared, do you have more information on how students would log in? It's just with, from my understanding, it's just the link like I sent in the chat. Is that correct? Yeah. Currently, there's just two ways to log in as a student because they don't, they don't, they wouldn't necessarily have an account. They'd just be using your account. <clears throat> Here's what I mean when I say that. When you create a space, you it's it's designed for guest access, so they don't have to have an account. So that's how they could go in and um, perform the assessment. Um, we're hoping that within the next month or so, we're still working on data privacy agreements with School AI um, so that students can get on, but that's kind of where we're at right now. So that's why currently it's a teacher only tool, but hopefully pretty quickly here, once the um, pilot kind of ends and we kind of decide whether we're gonna purchase this tool or whatnot, that's kind of when you'll see students have full access. Perfect. Thanks, Jared. And I hope to um, whatever tool that we end up using or supporting in the district, we'll be doing a lot of trainings and really trying to help um, this be a successful rollout because it's super, super new technology and we don't just want to like throw it at you and be like, have fun. Like we really want to support teachers in that. But as a coach, you guys can, um, you know, field some of those questions. Uh, it's looking like you guys know a lot of nouns, verbs, and adjectives, and I'm super proud of you, <laughs> but I wanted to show you, um, there's a couple of you who are, are doing some good examples. I can see that there's two neutral responses. So those are the kids that I probably should uh, maybe pull into a group. So it looks like Colby, how are you? Are you feeling ready for class? I hope so. <laughs> um, and Colby did one where he's trying to like distract it. So I'm looking forward to learning about school AI. And it said, that's great, but we're going to focus on something else. So it tries to redirect. Um, he also went, I already know all about that, <laughs> which is really, I tried to do this with, okay. So Jared has got a full frowny face. Um, and so as a teacher, I definitely want to look at this and be like, teachers are me like, te my teacher's mean. Uh, <laughs> and then just not even responding. I'm here to listen. What has been challenged for you with your teachers? Um, and then that's kind of fun because then you can see like what they're, what they're talking about. But anyways, and then you have this data there to, uh, to help you see growth. So then what you could do is go into spaces and do the same thing, but an exit ticket. So how you would start it is what did you teach today? I'll do nouns. Wow. Nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And what's interesting is you can do a specific learning outcome. Um, so I would probably go to that lesson plan and say, okay, identify what a noun verb and adjective is start the session copy it again i'll send it thanks for being my guinea pigs guys i'll send that in the chat we'll do an exit ticket to see if you learned anything about nouns verbs and adjectives all right you can kind of see when it prompts you um you can 
to fill that in. I'm just going to wait for some responses really quick. All right. Oh, we've got some, we've got some negative. We, we did not have as many learners and positive outcomes as we, <laughs> Kelly goes, I didn't know that they were so dumb. See, and like, I immediately got a red and was like, okay, uh, we need to figure that out. Um, and I'm sure that there's going to be more features. Like you can have them stop the chat. Um, and it also took a minute to like chat with them about it and say, okay, well, maybe I'm going to try and reteach you. Uh, so this could be a really great tool there. So I learned something new today. And then you have, again, that data to see who's negative, neutral, and positive. And that can help you with small groups, um, different things like that. So that is my super, super quick overview of school AI. Um, and I think what our teachers can really start looking at and what can be a really, really awesome coaching opportunity is to use this as a tool to help them do specific things that they're struggling with, um, with that planner and with that, um, they call it a co-teacher, this co-teacher chat, um, you know, des design habits and class culture, uh, brainstorm icebreakers, uh, different things like that. So um, I'll just open it up. Does anyone have any questions or are we all just kind of like, and we're going to go mess with it and, and think about it later. <laughs> There'll be more to come for sure. I was going to say another thing, if you're, you have teachers that are on it, they're really good to get you going with donors choose, like helping mm. you find that right language and the verbiage oh. to write a donors choose Grant. I did not even think about that. I'm like triggered by having to write those grants, like to word those things the way that they're supposed to. Oh man, that's a good idea. I also was thinking of like projects, like sometimes I'm like, okay, I need to do like some sort of a fun project or activity and I just can't think of anything. Can do that as well. Yeah, we had a teacher who struggled to find uh, enough of information and materials to teach one of her social studies lessons oh. and she used school AI to help her out with that yeah there's been a lot of like roadblock lessons where I'm just like I'm not finding what I exactly what I need and I do I, I dig through the internet dig through teachers pay teachers and I cannot find it AI can make it I think that's such a good idea also rubrics too like I was talking to a teacher who was making a rubric with WIDA inclusive language and um, those things that would just take us forever to make sure that we're doing correctly it can at least give us a start um, and really save us those times. The, going down that teaching rabbit hole <laughs> where you're taking a ton of time to do things. Um, any other ideas or questions? Something that I tried today was um, using it for translating. So I thought that might be good for like parent notes and also like for DLI teachers that maybe they can't find the passage they need. So to be able to use it for translating into any language would be awesome. Yes, that is a really good idea. That's so true. Um, yeah, I just think anytime, I, I think what I've been saying is how long did it take us in our minds to turn to Google when we didn't know something, how that was like kind of a change culturally. <laughs> but, and so that's kind of what we need to do. We can use this as, it's not only a co-teacher, but this can help us be good coaches as well. Be like, okay, let's chat with, that's, let's chat with AI because you can't get mad at AI for telling you, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it can also be a really great tool for, for us. So anyways, okay, well, if no one has any other questions, um, I'm on time, right? It was 30 minutes for this, my first one. It's my first one. So Woohoo! thanks for coming.